and he was walking in Eden with God. This was before the fall. Number one. Number two, he walked on the coals of fire. What is the coals of fire? It's a secret place in heaven where the secret things of God are. He had access to walk in the coals of fire and had access to all the secret things of God. So for him to have such a great privilege, he has great power, great authority. More than any other angels in heaven. If you look some of the angels mentioned in the Bible, they are so huge, so great, that when one particular angel came down, his glory was so great that it lighted up the entire earth like how the sun lights up the earth. So you try to imagine now. When the sun rises up, the fire and the glory from the sun, 93 million miles away from earth. 93 million miles. It's not like it's your next door neighbor. If your next door neighbor, you'll all become LFC. You don't know LFC? No. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> you know KFC? Yes. Lancaster Fried Chicken. <laughs> you people are too holy, you know? <laughs> anyway, 93 million miles away. That far, you can feel the heat of it. You can feel its light and its glory fills the whole earth. That is the sun. And now the Bible says an angel comes down and his glory lights up the whole earth. Now that angel is just one of the many angels. Just one of the many. And if that one of the many angels can have that much of glory, how much more the chief of all the angels? Lucifer means son of glory, son of brightness. He was the son of all brightness. Light shines out of him. He wasn't, reflect, he wasn't just reflecting light. Light was literally shining out of him like God. That is why he had the boldness to challenge God. I'll be like the most high because light was coming out of him. Such a highly exalted cherub. He fell. So much of power and glory in his hand. And he comes down. Now we need to deal with him. How are we going to deal with him? We cannot be dealing with just our little mumbo jumbo Pentecostal prayer, you know. No, that will not work. We need to confront him. He's down on this earth with great fury, great anger that he has been cast out. So he goes to make war with the church, war with the remnant, makes war with the two witnesses, makes war with everybody who has put him out of his second heaven domain. Even his last chance of taking back heaven, now gone. So if you, if you can't win, at least kill someone. Have you heard of that before? Okay, if you can't win, at least destroy whatever you could. So when the devil is coming with all that great fury, what is the church going to do now? How is she going to put up? Now, he is going to anoint the Antichrist and the false prophet with great awesome power. Because the Bible says, the beast gave his power to the false prophet and to the Antichrist to give all his power to the Antichrist and the false prophet, how are you going to contend with such a power with just limited small strength? If you read Revelation chapter 11 and chapter 13, those two chapters take place simultaneously at the same time. You have two witnesses from heaven they will be displacing awesome power of glory and the false prophet counterfeits 
at the same time he counterfeits whatever the two witnesses are doing and the whole world are confused thinking who to believe now the power of God or the power of this Antichrist you try to imagine like this in the court of Pharaoh Moses stands on one side he throws his rod down and he became a snake and then the Pharaoh's magicians they throw their rods down and it too became snakes now you as an audience who sits who stands at one corner looks at the scene what will you think which power is the greatest you'll be confused in the beginning you will think oh Moses God is the greatest because his rod became a snake just as that thought is about to sink into you the magicians throw down their rod and their rods also became snakes now what will you think who will you want to believe now you'll be confused such a sin will be repeated again in the last days the power of the two witnesses the two witnesses will be representatives of the last days church the remnant church the Moses and Elijah company that will rise up in the last days those two prophets will be physically in Israel but together with them will be the last days company scattered all over the world they'll all work together displaying the same power and same glory now you have an enemy who will counterfeit whatever you are going to do so if you are of the same caliber of the same power we are no match so God has reserved his last his best for the last days that no one will be able to withstand the wisdom and the power at which we will speak and display the resurrection of the divinity of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen now if you read Joel chapter 2 verses 30 to 32 it gives us a sign of the last days Joel chapter 2 verses 30 to 32 and I will show wonders in heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke the Sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood the Sun turning into darkness is a solar eclipse and the moon into blood the blood moon before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord now look at verse 32 and it shall come to pass that whoever now please note the word whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved now underline the word shall be saved for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance as the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls now all these years ever since I started walking with God you know when I read verse 32 I thought and I'm sure you all will agree with me because we would have all thought like that and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved meaning that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved from sin you'll be saved from sal you'll get sal saved agreed that's what I thought until this afternoon as I was meditating and preparing for this message I felt a presence in my room and I turned around and I saw the prophet Joel standing before me and he said that scripture actually meant shall be safe meaning they will be protected not just salvation it is there salvation is there but another deeper level of revelation a layer of meaning they shall be protected whoever calls upon the name of the Lord in the last days when there's gross darkness gross wickedness when you call upon the Lord you will be protected as the Lord has said among the remnant 
whom the Lord calls. The remnant, this prophet explained to me, will be called by the Lord are the ones who will be filled with the great powers of the age to come. That will be the remnant that is mentioned here. Not just any ordinary people. Among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Among the remnant, the Lord will call them. Okay, you come, you come, you come. They will be called and they will be filled with the powers of the age to come. You know, you have heard it mentioned many times by us. The body of Christ is not the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is part of the body of Christ, but the bride of Christ is not the body of Christ. They are two distinct. It's the bride of Christ that will be raptured, not the whole body of Christ. You may not believe it, it doesn't matter, but that's the truth. It's different. Let me give you an analogy like this. There are so many women here. Let's say one of you get married and you choose to get married during this conference. Okay? So you approach Pastor Joe. Say, Pastor Joe, I've been coming regularly to this conference, so it will be my great honor and blessing to get married during the conference. So Pastor Joe has been a very kind, sweet man. He agrees. He said, all right, on the last day of this conference, we'll get you married. So, everybody's so excited. So, Pastor Joe stands here, and the bridegroom stands there, and he said, okay, let's all stand up to welcome the bride. And Gene plays the keyboard. Yeah, it's always Gene, you know. <laughs> and here comes the bride. As she's playing, all the women get up, and they start walking down the aisle. What will happen to this poor bridegroom? <laughs> Whom will he choose? Have you ever seen a scenario like that? Have you? No, right? Among all the invited guests, there will be many women. The bride is also a woman, but only the woman who has made herself ready, like the bride, will walk down the aisle to meet her bridegroom. All women are women. The bride is also a woman. But not all women walk down the aisle. Only she who has made herself ready. Likewise, only the remnant who have made themselves ready will be the bride. Not every Christian. Only she who has made herself ready will meet her bridegroom. Because you have made yourself ready. You have purified yourselves. You have prepared yourselves like Esther. 12 months of purification. 12 months of preparation to meet the king. You prepared yourselves. You got rid of all the filthiness from your body. Great spiritual detoxing taking place. An infusion of frankenstein smells gets into the body. You're purified. You're made clean, pure, holy, beautiful, inside and outside. Only the remnant will be endured, anointed with two kinds of power in the last days. One will be a prophetic kind. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 to 29. Your spiritual eyes will be open. Your spiritual ears will be open. And your spiritual mouth will be open to prophesy and to see into the spirit. Secondly, the powers of the age will be given to them. Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. It says that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Now what is the glory of the former house? Are all the mighty acts of God that we read in the Old Testament. Whatever you read, this was what God did through Moses. This is what God did through Elijah, through Elisha, everybody down the line. That is the glory of the former house. And the scripture says, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former house. Today, 
we read the Old Testament, we, we read of the exploits of Moses and Elijah, and we wonder with awe and oohs and the ahs. But do you know, they are going to look at you and say, ooh, ah, even I did not do that. They will envy your days. You know, in 1985, I fasted for 40 days. And on the 40th day, the Lord Jesus appeared. And he said, I will show you now things that will come to pass shortly. And he went and he tapped on the wall. When he did, the wall disappeared. And I saw into time many, many events that we read in the book of Revelation. And among the many events, I saw the last great revival that will sweep this entire earth with great power and great glory. And when I looked at that, I strained my neck to see who is the superman, the great man of God that God will use in the last days. You know, we had one great man of God called Billy Graham. We had one great man of God, God called Benny Hinn, who did, there was always like one superstar who rose up, who stand out among the crowd of many. So I was straining my neck to see who's that one great man that God will use to usher or spearhead this entire movement. I found none. And I asked the Lord, so Lord, who will be the person who you, whom you will use in the last days? So the Lord told me, the person that I will use in the last days are the nobodies. It will be the children. It will be the youth. It will be the senior citizens. The nobodies, the faceless, the nameless, the selfless. Upon them, I will pour out my glory. And they will be the ones that God will use to be the movers and shakers of the last days. Amen. And you know, at that time, the Lord Jesus told me, Moses, Elijah, Paul will envy your days. I was shocked. I was just shocked. And, I, and it took me a great while for this thing to sink into. You mean for Moses to envy my days? Moses parted the Red Sea. So for, for Moses who parted the Red Sea, for him to envy you, you cannot be parting a stream. <laughs> right? You cannot be parting a stream. If you part a stream, Moses will tell you, no need to part, you can just walk over. <laughs> you know, for Moses to envy you, you are going to do greater. Maybe parting the Atlantic Ocean. Amen. 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 Only then they will envy you. Isn't it possible? Yes. It is possible. Yes. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Yes. Not only with God, all things possible, but also to Him who believes all things are possible. If you can believe without doubting, that enemy needs to be killed. Doubt. If you can believe without doubting, you know when the Lord Jesus said, if you look at this mountain and he say, be gone. It's not a figurative language, you know, like what theologians explain today it will literally move if you can believe. The issue is this, can you believe? It's not just a mental belief, you know. You can believe in your heart, but your mind must also agree. There must be one, one agreement. You cannot be believing and at the same time doubting, which we do today, right? Today we doubt and believe at the same time. You know, simple math tells us plus and minus or equal or minus. Both must agree. 
You must have a plus and a plus to equal a plus. So your heart must believe, so must your mind. It must not doubt that this cannot be done. Your mind must be in agreement with your heart. Let the meditation of my heart and the confession of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my God. Before what you say can be acceptable and for it to come to pass, the heart and the mind and the confession of the mouth must all be in oneness, in one agreement. The former reign, Hosea 6, 3 tells us that God will come in these last days as the former rain and the latter rain. Not just a former rain and then after some time the latter rain. He says together, the former rain and the latter rain coming together, what is it called? It's called a perfect storm. A perfect storm. That's what is going to sweep over this whole world in the last days. So in Louisiana, the angel told me, the world has seen the Holy Spirit as a rushing wind, gentle like a dove, but it has not seen him as a tempest, as a storm gathered from the four corners of the earth as one great power to blow upon the earth. If you read Ezekiel 37 verse 9, the prophet Ezekiel was commanded to call forth the winds from the north, the winds from the south, the winds from the east, the winds from the west, and they all, the four winds came and joined together as one force and came upon all the dead dry bones that resurrected them as an exceedingly great army. So that is the wind that is going to come that will cause the shakening of heaven and earth, creating an awesome display of God's mighty power never before seen from the beginnings of creation. Not creation of this world, you know, creation of heaven. Because the angels say we have not seen yet. We have not seen yet. You know, Acts chapter 2 verse 2 tells us, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came as a wind, a rushing wind, and filled one house where 120 disciples were praying and waiting for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Haggai 2 6 says, in the last days, the power of the Holy Ghost will come like a perfect storm, not to fill one house, but the whole earth. One house was shaken, people were shaken, and they experienced the glory of God. In these last days, it will come upon the whole earth. The tempest and the wind will blow upon the whole earth. You know, the Holy Spirit will gather himself into one, three things. One, the four winds, from the north wind, the south wind, the east wind, and the west wind. Ezekiel 37, 9. And together with the wind will come the seven spirits of God. Isaiah 11, 2. And the spirits of God like a cloud. So you have a wind, and now a cloud. And thirdly, the seven fires of God. Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. So you will have a wind, cloud, and fire. And that's what Ezekiel saw. A whirlwind. A whirlwind, and there was fire engulfing in between. That will be the manifestation of the Holy Spirit's full power in these last days. And this afternoon, as I was preparing this, before I, I read the scripture in Ezekiel 1.4, at the back of my mind, I saw a vision of a great whirlwind that was moving in such a great power. I was looking at the scene like from a spacecraft, you know, from, like from the earth station looking down. And I saw this huge whirlwind 
like a hurricane that uh, a typhoon that satellite images will pick up and I saw this it has its eye was so white and it was engulfed with clouds and it was like a funneled and fire blowing upon it it was just moving and then when I read Ezekiel 1 4 it dawned on me that's what it is a whirlwind a whirlwind that will blow and pick up great strength a whirlwind destroys everything in its path right it destroys an entire city destroys an entire nation and that's exactly what the last days glory of God is going to do not physical destruction but tearing down of everything man made so that no flesh can glory before the Almighty God so in conclusion what do we understand or what do we learn you know whatever we have just read is what was foretold by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 where he says the exceeding greatness of God's power will be made known to us in these last days exceeding greatness now how can you define the word exceeding there's no definition you can't put a full stop to the word exceeding because it goes on exceeding right simple grammar am I right everybody the word exceeding there is no period there because it's exceeding is exceeding all the time the exceeding greatness of God's power is going to be revealed in this last day to the remnant and the remnant the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 the people that do know their God shall do exploits and the word exploits there is the exceeding greatness of God's power now before you can be trusted with the exceeding greatness of God's power you must first be a people that do know your God if you do not know your God then you don't have this power the word know in the scripture is in Hebrew is the word yada and the word yada means a deep intimate experiential knowledge of God it's not just a superficial knowing God you come every Sunday you come to your conference you hear about God you clap your hands and you shout amen and all that and you go back home you know nothing no this is a deep experiential intimate knowledge of God you have a close intimate relationship with God so first it starts you go back to the foundation of your relationship with God built up the relationship this is the first message given to the first church of the seven churches return back to your first love first step step first step return back to your first love come back come back come back to the starting block that's where you fell you know when you first started in your walk with God you were full of fire full of zeal full of love am I right everybody but along the journey we missed the baton we missed it it fell off the fire has fizzled out extinguish now you are just a lukewarm Christian trying to warm up the pews not even warming the pews you're worse than that trying to warm up the fuse with all kinds of artificial fire now God is calling you come back to the beginnings the beginning is return back to your first love that should be the foundation a relationship with God 
that is the uppermost more than anything else proverbs 8 30 31 your relationship with god is most important at the end of everything when this whole saga is all over when you are with god it from eternity to eternity what matters at the end is not the powers of the age to come is your relationship with god Amen. Your love walk with God. That will carry you through till the end. Everything else is temporary. But the love relationship between you and God will last forever. Amen. 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 Let's stand up for a word of prayer. I have just set a record today, you know, by finishing so early. Now what I have shared with you today, I have built a premise. Tomorrow and day after tomorrow, we'll go deeper into what all the, the powers of the age to come are. There are seven kinds. And what they are, and then how we can receive them. What we should do to receive them or to be a participator, not a spectator. Do you want to be a spectator? I'm sure you don't want to be a spectator. Enough of being a spectator. Yes. It's time to get into the field. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's time we get into the field and kick the ball yes. rather than clap our hands and cheer someone else. Yes. Amen. Amen. Enough. Enough of all that. Yes. God is counting on you. Yes. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy that's been with us, Lord. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Father, whatever your children have heard today, I pray, speak to them tonight, Lord. Through visions and dreams, as they lay their bodies down to sleep. Even Lord, God has assigned many angels in this conference for you and their job is to make things simpler for you to understand the things that you hear in this conference so that you can be a remnant chosen by God. Many of you in this conference will hear crystal clear your call and it will be made known to you your destiny. What is your part in the last day's army of God? It will be made crystal clear to you, crystal clear known to you. And you will experience, if not seeing, but feeling, perceiving, Angels of God standing besides you. I see an angel of God right now with a fiery torch in his hand. The torch looks golden and the fire so bright and strong that the, the glory from the fire brightens the torch further. And the angel who's holding the torch also seems brightened gloriously by the fire that is coming forth on the torch. And he will give this torch to those whom God has called. 
this angel shows me there are two people here who have a special call on your life whom God called to do great and awesome things you started out for a while on that but then for some reason only you know best you missed it but today during these days if you will repent with all your heart and start walking back with God this torch will be restored to you not just as how you receive it but in greater greater manner and some will receive this torch for the first time signaling there is someone here you are doing youth ministry you are involved in youth ministry and it is your great passion to raise up youths who will walk in the power of God you are not satisfied with just little power or just just being a youth youths coming to a meeting and going you're not that you want to see this youths rise up in power and I see that that person will receive this torch firstly it will burn you and prepare you to receive this be consumed with that power so that you can use this torch to fire up others and I also see other angels with scrolls in their hands to give to those who have been praying for a long time to know what is God's call for you what is God's destiny for you what is the purpose of you even being born on this earth if you sincerely seek the Lord during these days these scrolls will be given to such people there is one pastor here you have been praying like this Lord how shall I build your church teach me Lord to build your church I don't want to make a mistake let me do it again right not in my own way but in your ways Lord and that pastor is going to receive a scroll the plans of God the blueprints of God because you have sincerely cried you have sincerely repented you have sincerely asked this grace will be extended to you thank you wonderful Lord Jesus and I perceive in my spirit right now all the youths who are here you are going to receive a tremendous blessing from the Lord in this conference so get your heart ready every day you seek the Lord and open your heart for a great outpouring of his glory and God will pour out his glory and some of you are going to receive angelic visitations who will come alongside to help you and guide you in the work that you have to do thank you wonderful God thank you good God oh glorious God your mercy and grace endures forever and ever come on lift up your holy hands and bless the name of the living God who lives forever and ever he's a good God thank you wonderful God 
Thank you, glorious God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. 